right? Let's start with CI CD, which means continuous integration, continuous uh, deployment, development, delivery, depending on who you ask and how they want to sound. So let's just leave it at CI CD. So what's this all about? Well, when you develop an application the right way, your code is probably going to pass through at least some of these environments. Starting with development, this is where the code is written on workstations and then stored securely in some server, code versioning system, for example. Any tests that run in this stage are sometimes run on the developer's laptop and some isolated VM or container environment so that it does not interfere with the system where the application is being deployed. We should also have a test or integration environment. This is where the code from multiple developers is put together and hopefully results in something that works. Well, if it works, then it can be tested to see how well it works. And if it does what it is intended to do, this testing can be manual or automated or scripted. We could also have a staging environment. This is a copy of the production environment and its purpose is to see how the application is going to behave in a production like environment but not accessible to all users, perhaps only a few who volunteered or were volunteered <laughs> to test the application. Uh, this is why testing at this stage is sometimes called UAT, that is user acceptance testing. Testing here is focused on usability, features, reliability. And finally, of course, we do need to have a production environment. This is where the application is actually released into the wild, which is your customers. <laughs> Now, remember a long, long time ago when we mentioned Waterfall and Agile development methods? Well, in Waterfall, a project should go through these stages in sequence, one after the other. But we know that Waterfall is so last year, so inflexible, so we should forget about it and focus on Agile. Now, on Agile principles focus on releasing features ASAP as soon as possible and focusing on you know, performance and features while bugs and faults can much more efficiently be identified in production, for example, when everybody starts using the application. Reacting to those faults found in production and the release of these frequent updates assumes a continuous, <laughs> see, continuous approach to integration on the new code in the old one and then fast delivery again delivery to the customers before they can write any bad reviews so there's ci cd for you right here if you want to find out more about the most popular open source software for ci cd i would advise you to have a look and try to install jenkins and play with it it's free and open source so long story short with ci cd we get this continuous uh, cycle through the dev development phase testing phase, production, implementation into production, integration into production, and then back again for each and every new iteration, each and every new feature, or each and every new bug fix. Now, most of the tools that allow us to automate the management of an infrastructure, things like Ansible, Chef, Puppet, Terraform that we mentioned in a previous video, they all implement a concept called IAC, Infrastructure as Code, which is mostly used in the context of creating and managing cloud resources uh, using simple text configuration files. And the purpose for having our infrastructure or our configuration described in code is to avoid mistakes and typos in repetitive tasks. So if we're treating our infrastructure code just like we did with an application code before, we get access to things like code versioning. We get the chance to roll back to a previous configuration where the previous version of the infrastructure was, was working properly. We can have code reviews that validate the infrastructure that we're about to deploy, unit tests. We can commit to a versioning system and keep track of multiple versions of the same infrastructure. So we get a lot of flexibility here. And not only that, but having everything in code provides a lot of speed, enables us to use advanced orchestration tools, makes deployments extremely predictable and encourages standardization. And another benefit is that IAC fights against something called configuration drift or lack of consistency. Now, those are systems that have been manually customized or somehow tinkered with after that initial installation. They're supposed to be identical, but they're not which creates bugs and management issues. These systems are sometimes called snowflake systems because you know if each snowflake is, uh, is unique. 
We don't want that in the infrastructure. IAC tries to eliminate this manual intervention and it makes sure that your infrastructure is always compliant and uniform and all those instances that should be identical are really identical. And it also serves as an auditing method. The code that describes your infrastructure can be used as a source of, a, of an infrastructure audit or a security audit because everything is already in there, not just the infrastructure, but the security policies, you know, the permissions, any access list that you might have configured in your infrastructure, they're all in one configuration file. So that's going to be the source for your security audit. And when this paradigm was introduced, it addressed the disconnect between developers and IT, the operations people. And you know where this is going, right? That's the DevOps idea. Because now using IEC and dedicated tools, developers can deploy the environments for their own applications using code. And they can do that by themselves, either as containers on their laptops or a virtual server in the company's data center or in any public cloud. So it's not just automation in a, in a scripting kind of sense, but also automation of the human effort. Developers don't need to interact with the IT people anymore to prepare their infrastructure, to test a new application version, they can just deploy themselves. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that human interaction is bad, but it's a lot of overhead and a lot of delay that it incurs. And sometimes you're just not in the mood for that cranky operations colleague. <laughs> and just for your general knowledge here, in DevOps, containers, or infrastructure as code, you will at some point hear the expression, pets versus cattle. And that's actually the same idea. You take care of pets, you give them names, you nurture them, you bring them back to health if they become sick. But that's a lot of effort. Those are your snowflake systems. Those are your custom systems. Those are your, your servers, which you, you manually manage and update and uh, tinker every single day. Now, on the other hand, cattle is important only in numbers. If you had cattle, you probably don't, but if you had a 1,000 cows, for example, you probably would not name and caress each and every single one every day. Instead, when a number of them get sick, you'll probably think about just replacing them. Now, this concept applies containers, infrastructure as code, and cloud environments in general. If you have everything standardized in code, it's that much easier to destroy a failed instance or a container and then recreate it rather than spending a whole day trying to figure out what went wrong with it and bring it back to, to its functioning state. So that's pets versus cattle. It's a bit of a cynical approach, I know, but we're just killing cloud instances. We're not murdering animals, so that's okay. <laughs> And fortunately, cloud providers, cloud environments are very friendly with this approach. Clouds will actually prefer, and you can see this in, in orchestration tools such as Terraform as well, they will prefer to destroy a resource and recreate it from scratch whenever a major change needs to be performed so that you will always have consistency and your infrastructure will be predictable and will be compliant with your desired configuration that you're providing the code in that infrastructure as code. And just to prove to you that I'm not talking nonsense, here's an article here about the history of pets versus cattle and how to use this analogy properly. Hopefully I, I did use it properly. I should have read this before recording. <laughs> So finally, we could not possibly mention CICD and infrastructure as code without mentioning DevOps, which is basically a trend, a movement focused on increasing collaboration between the developers and the infrastructure team or the operation guys. That's, that's the ops and DevOps. Now, this collaboration actually kind of blurs the lines between these two roles. So developers can now deploy their own infrastructure, for example, for testing their apps, their code, uh, using Docker files or Terraform configuration scripts. And on the other side, the operation guys and girls who were previously just managing physical and virtual hardware now manage cloud infrastructure, as well as the automation that builds it, often describes in code files, hence the infrastructure as code paradigm. So if you want to have a glance at just how vast the realm of DevOps has become and how many technologies are already there, have a brief look at this link from Digital AI. I, I'll bet my entire YouTube earnings this month, which is painfully low, <laughs> that you haven't heard of at least half of these. You'll definitely learn about some new tools, uh, some new categories of tools, how they relate to one another, and you'll get a big picture of just how vast the realm of DevOps has recently become.
And finally, there's also the newly introduced term of DevSecOps. Of course, this is going to extend this already weird and blurry field of DevOps into surprise, surprise security. And especially when it's related to the to software development. The main idea is that security should be an important topic at every stage in the development cycle and the development of a software project. And since one of the main advantages of DevOps is what we just talked about, like speed and automation, security solutions focused on protecting DevOps environments and DevOps projects should be those that play best with automation, with scripting, and in general, uh, the solutions that benefit from a developer's expertise when it comes to detection and alerting. So we're not just involving security at every stage on the development cycle, but we're also trying to automate security as well. Good luck. <laughs> So that's it about CICD, Infrastructure as Code, DevOps, and DevSecOps. Make sure you can describe what each of these terms cover and how they change the way we, we build, we ship, and we test, and you know, we, we develop applications. Make sure you have a clear picture in mind of how this entire development process is moving forward. Not just for the exam, but, you know, for your general knowledge and your general skills. Alright, so if you found this useful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And see you next time when we will be talking about artificial intelligence and machine learning. Briefly talk about those two. Right, so thank you so much for watching and see you next time.